What is up guys? Welcome back to HLP Products Hafferland Performance. First, I hope everyone's having a great Friday. We're going to do a little HLP knowledge drop today. And in regards to that, it's going to be port shape, volume, and velocity. So what I have in front of me, the only one I'm missing would be a Gen 1. Gen 1 uh, cylinder head or engine code would be here. This is a Gen 2 engine code. And then just as a Gen 3, the Z and the Y on the Gen 3s. Gen 2 would be all the second generation A codes and then the traditional three port exit heads would be the Gen 1. There's a common misconception that somehow these Gen 1 heads with the tradi traditional header style um, exhaust ports somehow are just the absolute shit. Like they roll over everything. The only time it would ever make sense in my opinion to go from one of these single exit heads and convert it over to the traditional header style is um, if you're uh, forced induction. We're talking, you know, a thousand horsepower or higher because at that point you do have more volume. But what suffers with more volume, especially when NA guys, is velocity. So this is the point I'm trying to make here. Honda went to these Gen 2 uh, single exit heads, right? 75 millimeters wide, 75 millimeters wide. Okay, cool. They're the same, right? 36 millimeters tall, 33 millimeters tall. You guys can see the difference there, all right? You see the difference there. So these Z and Y engines, they make more power, right? But I thought larger exhaust ports equal more power. Now, this is not a rule all, guys. And obviously, you know, I'm being a little facetious here, but... Um, there's a reason why Honda keeps shrinking the fucking exhaust ports down. Sorry. Sorry to drop the F-bomb, guys, but it's, it's just so frustrating um, because nobody listens and everybody still does the same shit. Well, we're over here doing what we have for two decades, and then our customers make the power they do, and then uh, it's all just – I'm full of bullshit. So it is what it is, but there's a reason why these ports keep shrinking, guys, for NA again. NA applications. Why are these Z and Ys making more power? Is it solely based on the exhaust port? No. There's a there's multiple reasons, guys. Compression, slightly, slightly different um, exhaust or cams, slightly different cams for between the engines. Um, and I'm talking about lift and duration and everything, guys. I'm not talking about the lobe orientation or anything like that. So, like I said, guys. I see them porting the shit out of these exhaust ports, and I just laugh. Like, I just laugh, especially for NA, and then they can't figure out why they only gained, like, two horsepower. And then while we're on the head topic, the cylinder head topic, um, I wanted to address guys that think the TL Type S heads are somehow better, or the RL heads are better. So the 07 to 09 RL heads... Um, the 0708 TL Type S heads, the J32A3, all those heads are identical. 89 bore, so the combustion chamber is an 89 millimeter bore. So 89 millimeters across. So they're the same, same piston bore diameter, all right? Um, the, the valves are basically identical. Uh, I think the J32 may have 35 millimeter valves where the TL Type S and the RL have 36. But outside of that, the heads are identical. Same port shape, same rockers, same inlets, everything, guys. So if you are swapping away from your stock head, say you have, um, you know, an 04, 04 to 08 J32A3. Say you have a J32A3 and you get some TL Type S heads. Drop those on. You're going to make maybe three wheel horsepower. And that's going to be simply due to the TLS cams, which are, again, slightly, guys, slightly more. I have a whole YouTube video going on over all the OEM specs. And when when comparing OEM specs, you're just shooting yourself in the foot, guys. I've tested the MDX cams, the RL cams, the TLS cams, the J32A3 cams, which are actually the biggest VTEC, which is... <laughs> Anyways, guys, go on to YouTube. I went over all the OEM cams. You are shooting yourself in the foot if you're swapping to, between OEM cams. You're doing all that work, all that labor to pick up like three horsepower, all right? Now, if I was, a, say, a J32A3 or J35A5, I would stick 
basically any time I would stick with the heads that I have. And if there's a cam available, a good cam like our stage one or stage two, you're going to pick up more power, way more power for less money. Just swapping a cam in, leave the head stock, do nothing to the heads, swap a cam in. Our stage one will pick up 20 to 25 wheel horsepower on average. Um, that is tuned for where, but we have guys making, you know, 18 to 20 untuned, which is just crazy in my opinion. Um, and then our stage two pick up 25 to 35 wheel horsepower on average. Our J32 A3 test vehicle, single exit heads picked up 36 wheel horsepower and made damn near 320. All right, so what I was saying, guys, is we don't test on race gas, and I'm not hating on anyone that does test on race gas. I personally, I feel it's not apples to apples. I feel you're doing oranges to apples um, because essentially like race gas or nitrous, it's like it's like testing on nitrous and saying that's what the, the, the parts are going to make. Um, we test on as close to what our customers are going to run, street customers, DIY guys are going to be NA and they're going to be on pump gas. So that's what we always tested on, 93 pump gas. Only time we ever put ethanol in the car is when I went turbo on the cams. Um, and I did an E35 mix and then I did an E85 mix. But like I said, that was forced induction testing. It wasn't cam testing. So I, I like comparing apples to apples versus oranges to apples because race gas is essentially nitrous in fuel form. It carries its own oxygen. And there's, I made a post and there's a little bit of debate. It's like 60 40. 60% think that race fuel is a power adder. 40% said no. Um, really, that's your opinion. You know, is it NA technically? Yeah, it's still NA. Is it a power adder? Absolutely, guys. Absolutely. It's oxygenated fuel. It's carrying its own oxygen in the fuel. And when it ignites, it releases that fuel. The same shit that nitrous does, except nitrous is sprayed in in gas form. Here, uh, uh, race fuel is oxygenated fuel. So it's nitrous, essentially, in fuel form, if you want to think about it that way. That's not the proper term, but you get what I'm saying, guys. Nitrous and race fuel do the same thing. One is just liquid. One is gas. So you you, you decide there. But what I was getting at, guys, is uh, if you're going to try to swap between heads, just don't. Just stay with the heads that you have. Pick up a set of our HLP Stage 1 or Stage 2 cams. Our Stage 1 require no valve swing change, so stock valves, stock retainers. You can run a stock tune. Um, I, we suggest tuning for it, obviously, to see the best gains, but you're going to pick up 20 to 25 wheel horsepower where if you swap heads and it happens to have the RL cams in it or the TLS cams, any stock cam, you just swap the heads over. You're going to be looking at maybe three. You'd be lucky five wheel horsepower, and you just did all that damn work for nothing where you can leave your stock heads on there, throw in a set of HLP Stage 1 cams, and easily make at least 20 wheel horsepower which it kind of gets me into its segue, but our stage ones are picking up essentially what these other stage two cams are making guys. Uh, and it's crazy. So I don't know, maybe we should name our stage two a stage three. All right, guys, to sum up this long ass post, Honda has gone from the most volume on the gen one header style heads, smaller to the gen two single exit heads, shrunk it down again for the Z and Y engine heads. ZY, Gen 2, Gen 1. Moral of the story, guys, you would be better off sticking with whatever heads you have on the car. If you wanted to port and polish them, you know, a light port and polish will, will do great things. It will, it will help increase, you know, flow and velocity. And mainly, uh, you just want to cut down on, you know, any of the castings and trying to help the air turn a little better because that's that's usually what it's about at least that's what i found um honda like i said honda shrunk it down over the years and what that does is it increases velocity so if we were going based on other others people um their assumption where bigger is better which is 
larger airflow or larger volume slows airflow down. Smaller, as you see here, smaller ports usually increase velocity, but then there's a happy medium, bro. You, you will run into some type of choke point or reduce flow the smaller you get, but there's a reason why Honda kept shrinking everything down. So moral of the story, guys, doesn't matter if you have a Gen 1, J30, A1, J32, A2, J32, A1, J35, A3, all the Gen 1s. Doesn't matter if you have a J30, A4, A5, J32, A3, J35, A5 through A9, um, J37, A1. Doesn't matter if you have a dual VTEC, Z, um, Y, whatever. In every case, guys, it's, it's honestly for 90% of our customers and people out there, you're going to be better off leaving your head stock. Don't swap between them. Get get a good set of our cams stage one or stage two like i said before stage one requires no valve spring change no retainer change um do suggest tuning on it but you don't need to and then obviously our stage two are way more aggressive they're basically like a stage three compared to any other on the market so that's it guys um i hope you like the videos <laughs> and you guys have a blessed day